Santana and you listen to the music of Carlos Santana. And right now in the studio, we have the privilege of having with us uh, a couple of authors of some very unique uh, material. It's a book on spray can art, and the authors with us are Henry Shafant and Jim Prigoff. Uh, I'd like to welcome both of you here to La Onda Bajita. How are you doing? Pretty good, thanks. We're delighted to be here with you, Chewy. Uh, great. Well, um, I think what I'm sort of curious to find out is how did you get into doing a book about spray can art? Well, it goes back a long way. I don't want to go on too long about it, but I did a book before on graffiti art in New York City when the, the kids painted the subways. And Jim is a, is a collector of murals from way back. And so he liked the first book. He got in touch with me. He said, let's do another one. So that's how we got together on it. Oh, that's cool. But, I mean, what did you see in... Uh in spray can art and graffiti that sort of gave you like uh, a perspective that hey this is art this is culture well you just you just have to look at it when people talk about graffiti often they think of of uh, scribbling and marking up and everything but the way graffiti evolved in new york over the last twenty years it evolved into a very advanced art form very unique invented by young people and, yeah. uh, and for, I don't for me it caught my eye because in documenting mural art throughout the united states I was attracted to the fact that the young people were using the walls that others used for murals to create their own murals, but through spray cans. So I found it a very exciting art form and began to follow it and became acquainted with Henry and felt that we ought to then have a follow-up book to Henry's Subway Art, which showed how the art came out of the South Bronx and out of, out of Manhattan and spread to Philadelphia, Chicago, all the way to the West Coast, and then around the world. Yeah, well, that's interesting, you know, because in the barrio, in the Chicano barrios, I mean, graffiti has always played a real important part of sort of uh, the artwork and sometimes the territory designations and stuff. Have yeah. you guys checked out very much uh, Chicano uh, graffiti, and what do you think about it? Uh, we, we're familiar with the uh, the Cholo style, and uh -huh. uh, it's it's very interesting because most of most of the graffiti, as you say, is territorial and demarcating, you know, various gangs, and the Cholo is. Uh, an ev evolution beyond that. It's beginning to develop some style. Uh-huh. Well, that's pretty yeah, cool. We both have watched the cholo style, particularly in L.A., where they get into 3D and they get into dimension, and it's very distinctive. It's, it's a very distinctive kind of tagging. Same thing in Chicago, where I lived. So uh -huh. that was kind of an early part of the evolution. That's sort of a trip, but... Uh is it all of this like sort of natural artists, are people that just sort of have, you know, done the art and naturally developed a talent? I mean, because it takes a lot to be able to see perspective and to be able to see lines and things like that, you know? Yeah, well, you hit on something. It's not something you learn in school. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty these cool. Gu these guys who do it, um, they learn from, from their older brothers and their older friends, and they w learn from experience. It's kind of an apprenticeship. You go out with the guys and and you paint with them and you learn, you pick up the tricks from them. But what's very meaningful for me is that a great many young people who never would get into an art class in school have gotten into art in the streets. And one of the things that interests me very much, and one of the young men you'll talk to uh, tonight, is a young fellow who learned in the streets is now going to art school and really seeks an art career. And Henry and I could name for you dozens of instances where young people who never would have been in this field but had an artistic sense and a talent developed it through their street art. But you know, something about graffiti, man, is that around here, it's a crime, eh? You yeah. know, it's like uh, if you get caught for spraying graffiti, you end up uh, cleaning all the walls in Oakland, cleaning all the, the bar in San Francisco, you know? So why is graffiti art considered a crime? Well, because it's done without anybody asking permission on public property or even on private property. So, um, according to the law, it's vandalism, but you've got to see the both both sides of it. Uh, and part of the part of the thing is part of the pleasure, obviously, is the fact that it's oppositional and that it's forbidden. And for adolescents to do something like this, it's a, it's an act of bravery and and uh, resistance. They, well, it's, it's also saying it's here also I am, resistance. I exist, and to a culture that doesn't really pay necessarily a lot of attention to the young people. And so for some young people, it's a way of making a statement. Henry and I uh, differentiate very much between three levels, really. There's the level of tagging, which is the thing that bothers the, the community most. And then there are things that are called kind of throw-ups, where you, you do your tag, but it's a little more stylized, it's a little more interesting, exciting. And then there are the pieces 
and those are the uh -huh. short for masterpieces, right? And those are what Henry and I have been looking for, are the masterpieces, the real art form, and that's what we've documented and tracked in the book Spray Can Art. Great. So we're speaking with uh, Henry Chalfant and Jim Prigoff, who are the authors of a great book called Spray Can Art. And I tell you, if you check it out, it's going to just trip you out because... Uh, the stuff is amazing. I'd like to thank you for coming by, and you know we're going to talk to Raven and uh, Richie in a few. So, all right. Thanks a lot. Muchas gracias. Thanks, Thanks for having us here. All right, and you, we're in, you're in tune to La Onda, and right now uh, we're going to get to a little bit of Tower of Power. Tonight we're uh, sort of devoting a little segment of La Onda Bajita to talk about graffiti and spray can art and uh, just some of the stuff that you see on the walls sometimes. And with us here in the studios, we've got Sean, who's from the Bronx, New York, and Raven, who's from Pittsburgh, Pitas, Califas. All right. How are you guys doing? I'm just fine. I'm hanging in. All right. Well, uh, I'd like to ask both of you, maybe you can answer this for us, is how did you guys get into uh, painting stuff on the walls? Well... I don't know who should answer this question first. All right, I'll answer this question first. Well, I always, um, I started about, uh, could have been the uh, end of 73, beginning of 74. Um, I would look up at the trains and see, you know, pieces start peering on the trains, and I liked it. And um, from there, I um, picked up a few cans of paint and uh, tried it myself. And ever since then, it's been very addictive to me. And uh, I haven't stopped since then, and I've been... Painting away, and as I've been painting, I've been getting a little better and better, and I'm uh, happy with it, and uh, hope to continue doing it. That's pretty cool. I mean, but did you ever get in trouble with it? So far, I've been lucky, and it's been a <laughs> long time, you know. But it, there's been plenty of people that have uh, gotten whole lots of trouble for it. That's a trip. Raven, how did you get into it? <laughs> Let's see, I got into it about, uh, I'd say, 1983, 84, about 10 years after Scene did, and there was a book uh, entitled... Uh, Subway art that came out by the Henry Chalfant and uh, and it had a lot of scenes pieces in there and uh, a lot of people that influenced me and a lot of my friends and uh, a movie came out by the name of Style Wars and we took on those ideas and tried to develop our own styles you know really impressed by uh, New York and all they had to offer that sort of thing that's sort of a trip but you know like the graffiti has sort of changed in the last few years you know where it used to be like a uh, you know, the Cholo style was had a lot of real angular lines, and then now the stuff that, that's being put on the walls is a little bit more, uh, it's harder to see it, you know, it's almost like mm -hmm. hard, you know. Can you talk about that? Well, it's like, 
in the last, I don't know, it's been around, I mean, developing into uh, quite a colorful, you know, crazy thing for about, I don't know, 15 years. And when we took on it here on the West Coast, it's like, there's so much, it's endless, you know, there's so much we can do with it that any styles that's already out, we're trying to do the opposite of that. And then, do, you know, bring out a new style and then do the opposite of that and just keep working it and, you know, <laughs> until you find something you really like, you know. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, how about you? I mean, uh, seeing, how do you see it in New York? I mean, the styles from, let's say, the East Coast to the West Coast, are they totally different or is there somewhere along the line where they sort of maybe have some familiar ideas? I think they're mostly different than uh, back home, uh, especially all over other than New York. I noticed that uh, styles is a lot different. There's some color blending here and there you might catch that look like a little bit like New York. But other than that, I think the people from other places are trying, basically trying to do different than what's in New York, to have their own different styles and stuff like that, you know, to be different, you know, not just to copy from what we've done. I think they're trying to do something on their own. That's sort of a trip, though, but uh, do you guys consider it art? I mean, or, or how do you guys see the graffiti? I consider it as, as an art now. At first, I never considered it as an art because I just liked to do it, and I thought it was fun, you know. Now I know the... You know, it's still fun doing it, but uh, how can I explain? It's a little hard, but uh, I consider it as an art and still fun. Right. Right. Yeah, how about it's, you? It's a, there's, one thing about it is there's no real form to it. I mean, when, when you draw a tree, you know, it looks like a tree, or you draw a person, it looks like a person. But letters, you know, it can be any kind of style you want. So it's really open-ended. You've got any colors, you've got, you know, anything open that you want to do, you can do, and it won't be wrong. So... And you know, it makes it real interesting. There's no end to it that way. And if you make a mistake, nobody will ever know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, but, you know, uh, how do you feel? Like, let's say, for instance, if you just painted a wall, you know, and you put up something that maybe took you, you know, a whole bunch of time to do, and all of a sudden somebody comes along and paints over it, you know, says, hey, man, I don't want this yeah. stuff on my on my wall and just paints over it. How do you feel, you know? Well, it bothers me a lot, and uh, it happens to me a lot, too. And there's nothing really much you can do about it but just do another painting. Even if it's yeah. in the same spot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's part of the risk, you know. That's it. That's what it's all about. I mean, how do you see it, though? I mean, you feel like you're taking a chance when you get up there and do it. I mean, are you feeling like all of a sudden, like, like, like you just opened a window and, broke, and jumped into a house or something, you know, that, that tight feeling in your stomach or something? I mean, Always taking a chance, and you always get that feeling. But I think that's, uh, that's what uh, keeps me going from keeping on doing it. I mean, that uh, risk of uh, getting caught all the time, that gives you the adrenaline just to... Uh, keep going and do it in the next time and the next time what a trip you know over in oakland where i around where i live uh somebody's doing a straight ahead mural of spray can art but it's a straight ahead mural of uh of oakland and they're putting different mm -hmm. things i mean do you think that spray can art would eventually become legitimized where instead of seeing people doing uh you know murals on under bridges and stuff like that in in, in paint that it would be spray can i think so if yeah. if we keep if we keep fighting for it and uh keep going on it and uh pushing along. I think maybe someday it can make something bigger than it is right now. That's pretty cool. Well, uh, is there anything you guys want to say to the people about uh, your, your your art and uh, maybe about the book a little bit? Uh, let's see. First of all, the book's worth getting. There's a lot of good stuff in it from all over the world. A lot of our friends, a lot of you know people from around the way here. And uh, as far as graffiti goes, it's going to be around. It's been around. And like I said, there's no end to it. And next time, you know, just take a closer look at it. It's going to be here. Cool. How sure. about you, Cena? Well, I think you about wrapped it up over here. And uh, I just... Uh... Hey, let me let me ask you guys something, man. I mean, after doing, after all that spray can, I mean, does, does it ever do anything to you? Does it ever, <laughs> does it ever do anything Damn. to you guys? <laughs> uh, we'll have right. to find out in the future, I guess. <laughs> Come down with something. All right, no comment. Right on. <laughs> All right, well, good talking to you guys. It was good having you here, you know, because yeah. uh, I think that it's a, it's a sort of scene that has long been neglected, and people have put a, definitely put, like, a negative tag on it, and really it is art, you know, it's street art, and it's something that sometimes when it develops out of the people, uh, it probably lasts a, lasts a lot longer, and it's usually around a lot longer. So uh, thanks a lot for being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.